Welcome back to the Tarot Cottage. My name is Amy. I'm back today with a pick a card reading for you. Um, I want to take a moment to say welcome back to my beautiful returning subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all your beautiful comments. A big congratulations to this week's winner of the free tarot reading. Be sure to drop your comment below as well because I will be drawing another name in a couple of days. So be sure to hit your notification bell, drop your comment below any of my videos this month for your chance to win. Um, and be sure to hit your notification bell so that if you are chosen the winner, I can reach out to you and we can get the ball rolling. Um, for today's pick a card reading, we are looking at a person from your past and we're asking the question, does this person still think about us too? So we're thinking about this person. Do they still think about us? And if they do, what are some of the thoughts that they have about us? What are some of the impressions that we've left, left on this person? And we do have three piles to choose from today. Um, we have pile number one with the six of cups and the little reddish flower. Pile number two with the ace of coins and the white flower. And pile number three with the temperance and the yellow flower. So whichever pile or piles are calling out to you, there may be a message waiting today from spirit, from your spirit team, from um, this person's spiritual team as well. And my timestamps are listed below this video. Um, I'm going to jump right into pile number one today. It, again, it's all about somebody from your past today. Um, it doesn't have to be romantic in nature. This can be friendship. This can be an acquaintance. But we're just looking at do they still think about you as well? Because they're on your mind. So they, do they think about you too? Um, what sort of impression did you leave them? And what are they thinking? in this moment when it comes to you. Um, pile number one. Hi, pile one. You were drawn to the little reddish flower um, or to the six of cups. And this is your reading. The person on your mind that you've been thinking about, do they think about you too? Um, what sort of impression did you leave them? Um, what are they thinking when it comes to these thoughts of you if they are thinking about you? Now, the Six of Cups is very nostalgic. So this could be somebody way in your past. Um, it's very strong emphasized on friendship actually. So this could be a friend from your past that you're asking about. Maybe it never even turned into a romantic connection, but there's definitely a sense of connection because this is not just any friend. They left a lasting impression on you. And you're kind of wondering if that was one-sided. You sometimes wonder if it's all in your head, this connection that you felt. Because although this does feel like friendship, it feels very innocent in nature. But it's like you put this person on a pedestal. It's like other people in your life can't come close to them. Um, and some of it could be because they never had the opportunity to like hurt you or anything, but they're, they're just put up on this pedestal of like that one person that never disappointed you or that one person that didn't hurt you or there's just on this pedestal. So you wonder if they, if they feel the same way, if it's very, um, two sided in a sense. And the six of cups definitely does speak about connection that even exists beyond this lifetime. So you could have felt a really profound kind of connection the minute you met this person in the past too, which is why it's really difficult for you to shake their energy. But you're very nostalgic about them. You wear very rose color colored glasses when it comes to this person. So let's take a look and see if they feel the same way about you. So do they, do they think about you as well? Do they ever think about pile number one? What was the impression that you left them? I feel like there's this desire to communicate as well. I keep looking at that crow who wants to vocalize. And there's an emphasis too on not saying something, not really expressing how much this person meant to you or what impression you they left to you. We have the Knight of Wands. We have the Eight of Swords. So do they think about you too? We're going to get some cards down before we start to talk about it. Whoops. Ace of Cups reversed. We have the Five of Wands. We have the Hierophant. Back of the deck, we have the Magician. And we have the Knight of Swords. You know, it's interesting because this person is actually operating off of... Um, beliefs that they think are true it's like they are confused about how you feel about them just as much as you're confused and so they're they sometimes operate off of that belief system like they operate off this belief system that's that's kind of takes their hope away to be honest it's like it's almost like they're trying to convince themselves that you don't care so that they don't have to worry about it or they don't have to it doesn't have to consume them but i feel like it kind of does to be honest with you because it's hard for them to turn their back on that hope um, because you still make them feel sort of restless, despite the disconnect between the two of you. you. They feel restless and a little bit jealous when it comes to you. 
And when I tell you that they do still think about you, um, they're emphasizing the crown chakra here on the Hanged Man, and it's often very much lit up in the traditional Rider Waite tarot. And so the Hanged Man talks about somebody who feels like they're kind of, the situation is out of their hands. They can't really do anything about it in this moment, but they had a lot of wishes and desires about you. If this was just a friendship, this person was crushing hard upon you crushing so hard upon you that they had all of these desires, hopes, attraction, um, but they didn't do anything about it. And so now they're like, they're still kind of kicking themselves. They're still frustrated with the whole situation. They know that they should have said something or they know that they, sh they should have been more generous with you. And that's what they often think about is like, I should have been more generous, but I was waiting for them to be generous with me. <laughs> it's like you were waiting for them to be generous. They were waiting for you to be generous. But this Knight of Wands, even in the current 3D situation that they're in, and they've evolved, they've grown up. They're not innocent anymore the way that you remember them. They've definitely evolved to, to a, a more full rounded human being. Um, they're still restless and jealous. And I do feel like you both felt very similarly. I think that you both really cared about each other, really cared about each other. Two people sitting in the out in the darkness together, <laughs> two people out in the cold. And I feel like you knew each other for quite a few years, perhaps in the friend zone dynamic. You knew each other for a long time. Um, and so there's like, it's almost like as time slipped away, our chances of moving it out of our friend zone into something more romantic seem to chip away too. Because it's like the longer I procrastinated, the harder it was for me to say something. And they often think about that. About how they were sitting on potential and they let they wasted potential. I keep feeling waste. This, this beautiful swan is sitting on a dead swan. If you look underneath, she's got skulls underneath her. And so it's like I, I incubated something too long until it reached an expiry date. I had so much potential and I incubated it too long. I feel like the divine feminine in this connection feels the same. So you think about this person in a very strong sense of like, I, I hesitated. They think very, very similarly. And they like to think about you in the past because it brings them a lot of l levity to their situation. Like they, they remember you in a very joyful way. There's something about your laugh that they remember quite a bit. And we have the lovers. Ace of Cups with the Ace of Cups. It's very interesting because I feel like there's such a similar energy between the two of you, but this person's so convinced that you don't feel the same. But they keep trying to convince themselves that so that they, it's almost like they're punishing themselves. It's like they feel like they deserve to be, <laughs> to be punished. Um, there's a certain amount of disappointment that they feel in the 3D right now when it comes to you, when it comes to the connection, when it comes to revealing something. And they do feel like conversations are needed. Like there's a closure cycle here that doesn't exist. And I feel like there's been such a lot of growth for both of you, both in your careers and your, your practical realms. Like there's been so much growth, so much evolution, and they haven't been privy to it. And that makes them feel kind of sad that they haven't known what's been going on in your life. The Hierophant can talk about institutions, government, marriage, just everything that you have done to evolve into a higher state um, of awareness and how despite all of that, you still make them feel jealous. You still rattle them a little bit. You still infuse them with insecurity sometimes because they let you get away. You were the one that got away. If you look down here at the little rabbit escaping the foxes, it's like I was just waiting for the perfect moment to say something and I let you get away. You were the one that got away. We have the four of wands and you could have had it all. That's what I heard. You could have had it all together. And they're still kind of holding on to that fantasy of like, we, what could we have built if I just stepped outside of my prison? If I'd made logical decisions, if I'd made smart decisions, what could we have built here? Maybe they wouldn't be experiencing stress in emotional states. Maybe they would be experiencing abundance with you because I feel like there's a lot of Honestly, there's almost love here with the Six of Cups. It's very innocent, but it, it speaks of such profound attachment. And I feel like there's a permanency to that love here too. There's the Two of Cups and there's the Eight of Wands. And there is still almost, when they hear your name, there's a reaction inside of themselves. Even if they can show it or they can't, there's a reaction and there's a pressure that they feel still when it comes to you. 
and it, they've had this epiphany and the epiphany is filled with so much regret so not only do they think about you too but you've left left a lasting impression and that's even being minimized by spirit it's it's you're unforgettable I'm just hearing that Nat King Cole song you're unforgettable and they will I don't feel like they'll ever be able to forget about you what sort of impression did pile one leave what does this person think about when they think about pile one we have here surrender to the sweetness venus energy pleasure joy and make love to life i do feel like this person's thoughts definitely fly into a physical realm when they do think about you because they never got a chance to go there and so they do think about that quite a bit as well um, and how the biggest lesson that they've learned in this connection is to just surrender to their feelings to just give in to them because the fear that they face then can't be worse than what they're facing now we have here messenger bringing harmony into balance and they do wish that there could be communications sometimes they feel like they want to reach out to you but they don't want to create havoc for you and then it says water your garden nourishment body care tenderness and rest and back of the deck says you're not for everyone embrace your weirdness face your true north because this person doesn't know if you feel the same way they convince themselves in some of their insecurity that you don't feel the same way as well but they do hope that you are happy i feel like they really emphasize this care over you it's like in an ideal situation you guys would ha have a relationship in an ideal situation but i feel like for at least one person involved here um there would have to be some really strong movements in your life in their life in order to actually execute that change um but in a perfect world you guys would be in a relationship but they're like i i want to keep you as my friend if that's the only capacity of which i can have you it doesn't feel satisfying it doesn't feel satisfying the way that they're feeling in the present energy um but that's all they feel like they have to offer in this moment or all they feel like they have available to them um, I will say that for someone watching, and this is not for everyone, please take the messages as they resonate here with you today, that one of the reasons why they can't approach you is because of attachments or because of commitments that they have made or that you've made. We have competition, the other woman looking over your shoulder, and I just saw seduction. So you definitely tempt them. This idea of you tempts them still. But there's also an intimidation factor that they're feeling. It's like, oh, if you haven't reached out to me, I'm going to assume that you're not interested. But they are wishing that they could experience your friendship again they felt very uplifted by it they wish that the two of you could meet and have a cup of coffee ultimately um, and this could be an, an aspect in a requirement for closure but truly they do wish that there could be a new phase they wish that they could prepare for union and transcend any obstacles that are in place here let's get some message cards here what are some of the thoughts that they have please When it comes to pile number one, what thoughts is this person having? Oh, we were friends first and I really, really miss that. Ultimately, they started with this friendship. There was a crush situation for sure, but they're like, I, there was something so special about you. I have so many distractions in my life right now. And I'm trying to make sense of all of this in this connection. Please give me time. Whoops on the floor we have can we try again question mark so they may not be privy to what's going on in your life or your attachments they don't know if there is obstacles or competition perhaps for your affections in the future but they they do feel like you're the one that got away i'm going to fix it but first i have to fix me can we start over they keep wondering about what the future outcome or what the future potential is because in a perfect world they're like if everything cleared away and there was no obstacles we could have a relationship i would still be down for that that's what i feel like i would still be down for that that smile something about your smile something about your laugh and i send you soul messages so even if there's no contact in the 3d they send you a thought shapes I want to call you, but would you answer me? So they're not sure about you. You may not be sure about their feelings, but they're not sure about whether or not you even want to hear from them in this moment. Um, 
but they definitely still feel very much entranced by you. I want to get... How does this person currently feel, please? What are their thoughts towards pile number one? We have here, set your course, know where you wish to go, have a plan in the right direction. And it's Alice and the Cheshire Cat, number 22. And there is an emphasis on connection. Like in a perfect world, this person still thinks about the possibility of the two of you. It's like when they think about the future, they fantasize about the two of you being in it. But there's this lack of direction, maybe being pulled in different directions with the chariot energy. They get lost in nostalgia from the past. They kind of get lost in a future fantasy, but it doesn't really focus upon the nature of the obstacles in the 3D experience right now. So they have to make a plan. And they fight against logic because I just saw the nonsense card because sometimes they tell themselves it's unrealistic to hope that you feel the same way. And then we have changed in the night. You have changed quickly and they've changed and they don't know if you would like the person that they've become in this present moment. It says covering up errors and they know that they made mistakes when it comes to you as well. She's painting the roses red. It's like, I don't want to lose hope. I want to hope that there's still a space for us as well. And I have so many regrets for not sharing my truth. They were so afraid of creating upheaval in your friendship that they ended up costing themselves a really valuable connection ultimately. And they have so much regret about the bridges that they burned here and watching you sail away. Let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number one. What was the very last thought that this person had about pile one in the bowl? So almost lost it on the floor. We have the two of cups reverse. The loss of the connection. The two of cups reverse can really speak about arguments or disconnections, um, breakups. The hanged man. And one out of the bowl that I missed. We have the ace of wands reversed. Now, they wanted to move into a relationship with you and they thought about that, about the possibilities of relationships. Right this moment, they feel like it's not possible and they were really thinking about, about the delays the delays in the past, the delays that they anticipate for the future, and the frustration surrounding that. In the bowl today, we have the letter T. We have the letter D and V. These could be initials. Sometimes I think about the hierophant with the letter V, so please take that as it resonates. There is a syringe here. So I think of addiction and codependency, so somebody who's almost obsessed with their thoughts of you. We do, but I, they keep it hidden because we have this big curled shell. I think of the empress, uh, also the pearl of wisdom. I think of the higher self. And so they're sitting upon this information that they feel about you. And they are re kind of really frustrated with we have the open book here about not sharing how they truly felt. And now they feel like they just have to surrender to th that emotion and just drown in it because the whale tail is blue. So the divine masculine feels like they have to drown in their own emotion and surrender to what is, which is they assume is a very negative out outlook because they're kind of waiting for a sign from the divine feminine. The queen of swords is represented by the small owl. And so there's an emphasis on the queen of swords here. You could be an Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini, but they are in, they were intimidated by you in the past. I feel like they still feel an intimidation towards your situation. All right, pile one, this is what I have for you today. I hope it resonates. If it does, please drop me a comment below for your chance to win a free reading with me. You can also check out Etsy for a personal reading. And on Instagram this week, I have a chance to win a free mini read. So be sure to check out that link too. But I hope that you come back here and visit me on another day at the Tarot Cottage. And I hope you have a great day. Hello, pile two. You are drawn to the cream flower or to the ace of coins. And this is your reading. The person on your mind, do they think about you too? What sort of impression did you leave on them? Um, and what are those thoughts if they are thinking about you? The ace of coins talks about opportunity. It talks about communication. So somebody who wishes that they could communicate with you. And this vine um, really speaks to more information, like seeking out more information that they wish could help them or, or you perhaps wanting to clarify um, unknowns with this person too. So a lot of information that wasn't shared, a lot of unfinished business, or a lot of discussions that were needed to honestly express ourselves in some way. So let's take a look here and see. Do they still think about you too? So the person that you're thinking about from your past, are they thinking about you too? What impression did you leave them? We have the Three of Swords, the Lovers, the 
Ace of Cups. The Queen of Swords. And we also have the Temperance as well. Back of the deck, we have the King of Wands. We have the Hierophant, a very strong emphasis on Taurus, emphasis on a higher energy as well. Also, Gemini is here. And we're going to clarify as we go forward here. What do they think about you too? Um, they do think about you, but it's a secret. Spirit says it's a secret. Even here, the Hierophant, you can see that there's the this giant key hanging down. And there's the Ace of Pentacles. Um, this person has a lot that they wish to express to you. They have a lot that they're kind of sitting upon, a lot of information that they're sitting upon. We have the Fool. We also have the Queen of Swords. There's a very strong emphasis on Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius here. And I just keep marveling about how mirrored these two swans are so they look like twins so there's a twinning energy mutual attraction between the two of you mutual impatience between the two of you too here's the chariot and there is an emphasis on holding back there's an emphasis on them holding back from the truth of how they feel. Even here at the Ace of Cups, there's a vine coming out of the cup with the with the Dove of Peace. And so it's like they wish that they could have full closure or full, full clarity over how you feel in this present moment. Because they know how they feel. They know which direction they want to go in and they're holding back until they get some sort of sign from you. Because they're hoping that the Divine Feminine will clarify the situation or lead by that example so that they don't have to rely on their own strength to execute that clarity. They're really concerned about that, about taking their cloaks off, taking their mask off. We have the Nine of Cups and we have the Ten of Swords connected with it, which is very combative energy because they're up and down when it comes to their expectations of what is possible in the future of your connection. Some days they feel very optimistic about how you feel towards them. They feel like they can almost feel it. Other days their logic takes over, I feel like. Their logic or their insecurity takes over and they start to think well, this is just wishful thinking. It's like this is just wishful thinking because they have such a strong wish surrounding you. So this is not just somebody who just thinks about you. Again, you could have broken up with this person if there was a heartbreak in the past. But there's also this, and that's just for one group, because there's also this message coming through about feeling like I was too afraid, too vulnerable to take a risk with you. And I was waiting for you to say something. And I was waiting for you to take the risk. But it's like the blind leading the blind. <laughs> Ultimately, if we keep holding off, if we keep... Focusing on what we want, but not planting the seeds, we're never going to get it. It's like watching other people win the lottery, ultimately. So it's like they always knew how they felt, but they were just too afraid to shoot their shot and they held back too, too long. They held back too long. And I feel like they're sometimes they will, when they're feeling down, will kind of try to place the blame a little bit on you. It's like, I don't want to take the fullness of the blame here because you could have said something too. And sometimes they go into those moods. We have the Queen of Cups with the Two of Swords. And look at the Queen of Cups holding a mirror up. So your heart space, if you're the Queen of Cups, you could be a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. If your heart space is filled, filled with permanent love, like the Queen of Cups, where she puts a lid on that love, this person feels very similarly. But they're not showing it and neither are you. There's almost this inability to commit to showing it as well. Because there's almost a danger associated with taking a risk and communicating at this time which is why they feel kind of pulled in different directions. Not only are they concerned about how they'll be received if they approached you, but they also are privy to, they could be watching you because they seem to be privy to what they assume you're involved in. They assume you're in a karmic relationship. They assume that you're, you're pro you've probably invested yourself somewhere else and they don't want to create havoc in that environment. So they know that now is not the time but they sure do have their heart set upon you. You know, they really don't think it's over in this connection. And I feel like they don't want to say that it's over in this connection, but they also are very much aware that now is not the time to approach out of respect, out of fear, whatever the case is, they know that now is not the time to approach. And they're just trying to make it through life until the time is right. But this was the same mentality or the same approach that they applied in the past or that this connection both of you applied in the past was this delay factor. And that's no way to apply force to the future of this connection.
What are some of the thoughts that they have about pile number two, please? Double mission. Lightworker star seeds serve the world by being you. We also have here star ancestor, hidden secrets, lost wisdom, and look a little deeper. Um, I feel like you have to look beyond the immediate appearances of you and this person to see the truth of your connection because I feel like you're both clammed up. Both of you are not talking about the other one. Um, we are part of the same soul family. You're part of the team of souls. Call in support. It says star family. Um, for someone involved, that could mean if there's a family unit in place. But there is a connection here that goes beyond this lifetime. So you're part of the same team. They're also called, they're bringing forward twin flame energy. Um, and that, that twin flame title can sometimes mess with people, can sometimes really make them go down a rabbit hole. Because what that, that twin flame moniker is supposed to offer us is just a snippet into the prompt or the trigger that this person created for you and that you created for them. It's like there is definitely a twin flame vibe that's happening here that goes beyond this lifetime, which means you're perhaps living very mirrored um, experiences and, and having very mirrored lessons on your soul contract that you have to tackle. Part of which could be opening up the heart space, being, being open and honest, because there's very strong mutual feelings between the two of you. But you can see here that the King of Swords is also trying to maintain balance. And so he's got that sword, or the King of Cups, I'm sorry, he's got the sword plunged down because he's trying to maintain balance somewhere else. And it may have to come at the cost of that something else if, we, he, if this person wants to have rebirths with you. So they know that now's not the time. They know that there's perhaps no room for commitment right now, but they don't want to give up hope. They don't want to give up hope that there's a possibility. How does this person think and feel? What are some of their thoughts, please, for pile number two? I'm just going through the motions of life right now. So with the temperance, it's the highs and lows of life. We're trying to find the balance. Creeping your social media. So if they are privy to your situation, it's because they're keeping tabs on you. I made so many wrong decisions when it came to you and I. I want to reach out to you, but I am scared. And there's still an intimidation factor with the Queen of Swords. Ideally, in any situation, it's always easier if the other person reaches out. And so, uh, because also if they reached out, they don't want to reach out in an, if, at an inopportune time if they're creeping your social media and you're in, involved in a karmic relationship, for instance. What are you doing right now? Question mark. So they want to know what you're invested in. They want more information about you. This ace of coins with all the vines, they're very focused on gathering that information. But it, I just heard the long game. It's like they're prepared to play the long game. You have made me so happy in the past and the attraction is undeniable. But reality has hit me like a ton of bricks is on the back of that deck. So they have to face the consequences of their truth now. Conse consequences of the reality of their feelings. We have paradise, happiness, expansion, joy, oneness, and enjoying each other. And that would be what paradise is. But you can see here with this paradise energy... It's a circle. It always makes me think of the fool uh, and the sun makes me think of clarity. So taking a leap of faith to create clarity, but then we have the palm tree of stability. And so that's going to be affected. You know, it's like creating a dream in the sand. And when I think of paradise, I think of the nine of cups. So somebody who thought of you in that way, somebody who still thinks of you as perfection. It says here, be lighthearted, finding out things coming to light, adapting, adapting, changing and healing. And ultimately, to be honest with you, the dragonfly is hungry for success. The dragonfly is born under the water. It's planted under the water and it has to survive on its own. As soon as it's hatched, it has to eat everything in sight that's smaller than it until it gains enough weight, until it gains enough structure to climb up a reed and take flight. And what a powerful moment of, of expansion that must be, but it has to play the long game and it has to be really hungry for its success. It has to avoid all sorts of dangers and predators as it waits for its opportunity. And so there is something here about changing directions and really wishing that there can be some sort of adaptation, some sort of healing so that they can gather enough information and perhaps have brand new opportunities with you because they wish that they could talk to you. Love call. Someone expresses love thinking of you and letting you know because they are thinking of you and this is the love call. This is them letting you know that they are thinking about you at this present moment. What are their current 
feelings, please, their current thoughts towards pile number two. We have here clock time, time pressure and inner rush number 14, and there is an emphasis on temperance. And when temperance shows up, everything's a little bit imbalanced and we're asked to kind of find a equilibrium to that balance before we progress and keep moving forward. Um, I do feel like they are dreaming about a triumphant return, but they are understanding, they're holding out for that too, but there is a reality check here and it has to do with the home, perhaps for you, perhaps for them, perhaps both, but there's a reality check that it's not time right now. But they're waiting for that time, waiting for the perfect opportunity to change directions in this connection um, and really hoping that they can create change too. Oops, let's get a charm bowl, please, for pile number two. What was the very last thought that this person had about pile two in the bowl, please? Four of swords. It was like a reality check of feeling stuck. The ten of, it's almost like they did it to themselves, these thoughts, because they were thinking about you perhaps in a very fiery way. Um, a lot of unknowns that they were trying to work through in their, in their own um, inner dialogue. Um, and the weight of this connection, the weight of the attraction that they feel like is really, really heavy to carry. Um, it was just kind of a reality check in their thoughts today about how stuck they feel. It's like, oh, they're on my mind again. I feel so stuck. Because I have to kind of stay retreated. I have to stay back for now. We have the letter H and I and it am him. We also have a cassette player, outdated thinking, um, replaying events over and over in our mind. We have Pisces for the Divine Feminine. We also have a Christmas present, I think, about um, December. We have the blue kitty cat reversed. I think about Divine Masculine. I think about Leo energy for the Divine Masculine. I think about a lack of courage. We also have here the Bible. So um, somebody who made a some type of someone who may took a vow in some way and we also have here the heart with the nursing cap so i think about a hospital nursing connection but i also think about nursing a heartache a heartbreak all right pile two that's what i have for you today i hope it resonates with you if it did drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me be sure to check out my links for etsy for personal reading and on instagram this week i'm offering a chance to win a free mini read so be sure to go over and check that out and enter for your chance to win but i hope that you come back here and visit me on another day at the tarot cottage and i hope you have a great day hello pile number three you were drawn to the yellow flower or to the temperance card and this is your reading the person that's on your mind do they think about you too what sort of impression did you leave them and what are their thoughts if they are thinking about you the temperance here is talking about patience so longevity you could be separated from this person for a very long time um i feel like there's a minimization of the role that this person has played in your life despite the disconnect it's like you they still influence you very heavily despite the fact that there's been no contact and so you're wondering if this is all all one-sided or if it's in your head in this moment you can see that she's just dipping her toe in the water which could could perhaps indicate the nature of the leap that we took overall in this connection it's like we just got our foot wet it's like we didn't even get to experience the full spectrum of this connection in the way that we want to um perhaps we were a little bit too patient and we, we didn't take action when we felt like we could have. And so this could also be reflecting how your person is feeling in this moment. So we'll see how they are viewing the situation at hand. So do they still think about you as well? You're, you are definitely thinking about them. Do they think about you too? What impression did you leave them? What are some of their thoughts? We have the Eight of Wands. The Ace of Cups. And this is the Kawaii Tarot that I'm using for you today. We have the Page of Swords. There is an emphasis here on school, so you may have gone to school with this person. We have the Five of Wands.
and the Knight of Coins. It's interesting because I just heard follow your nose. <laughs> when I saw the toucan, I heard that follow your nose, just like that old um, commercial for cereal. Um, because it's like we have to look beyond immediate appearances to see the truth of this person. It's like they are really good at suppressing how they feel. We have the Ten of Pentacles and we do have the Ace of Wands. Now, what's really interesting here is that the Ten of Pentacles is all about family. It's about security. You can see all of these cupcakes. You can see all the little hedgehogs too, little baby hedgehogs, a little hedgehog with a little hat on. So this person, there could be family units here for you or this person. There's just been evolution. And sometimes this person who thinks still very highly of you thinks about you in that position with them. It's like they fantasize about you in this position with them. They like to think about that. So this could already be present or this could be something that they do fantasize overall in the future. So please take that as it resonates. But they may be complacent because of, of, of this type of factor, because of their investments in some way. Um, there is a jealousy surrounding this connection. And you can see the little the little mouse here armored up holding a carrot, which is a symbol of temptation for me, that you are very unique when it comes to this person's perspective. You are set apart from other people that they've met, other people that they're currently experiencing. There's something different about you, but there are still, there are still obstacles in the way. And there is, um, it almost feels like they're unwilling to clear those obstacles out. So it's like they feel like they have to be patient because this is somebody who has built up some type of security to protect themselves. When I think of the little hedgehogs, I think about protection, you know? Um, and so they've built up some sort of foundation to protect themselves, but that very protection may now need to be taken down brick by brick if we want to execute change. And that's why it can't happen at this moment. They just are inspired for that. They're inspired to continue fantasizing. They feel inspired by this connection. But I feel like there could be a very similar dynamic to your situation. And again, that's not a message for everyone. But if it does resonate with you, you'll know what I'm talking about, especially when it comes to your positions. There's an elephant in the room, literally, here. And the same elephant, again, we go into commitments. We, we take certain pathways in life and certain doorways in life that are meant to empower us, that are meant to be on our side when it comes to luck, when it comes to abundance. But sometimes these are the very things that inhibit growth in other arenas. You can see two little rabbits on the scale and the scales are off kilter, which means now is not the time to kind of express our truth. Now is not the time for this person to charge through that doorway to express something to you. They don't feel like now is the time, but they want to. And they feel like you're the only one who can offer them that. And I feel very, like there's a very similar vibe between the two of you. It's like you may feel this is the person who can give you closure. They feel like you're the person that can give them closure or at least clarity over what happened between the two of you in the past. Because they keep emphasizing what happened between the two of you in the past or what didn't happen, perhaps. Because I just feel like a cat and mouse game or something. Or And there's also so much pressure, like so much attraction with the Eight of Wands. You have the Four of Swords. But then we have the Four of Swords. It's like so much pressure building and building and building. It's almost like um, the two of you had a really strong charisma when you were together. Or there was an obvious energy surrounding you. Obvious surrender. But nobody clarified. There's the Sun Reverse with the Queen of Cups. The Four of Swords says, I just retreated with that feeling. And it's like it ate me alive, but I just retreated with that feeling. It stung. But it's like because I didn't have and I didn't have any assurance from you. And they are saying that there is this, I don't want to say emotional manipulation, but there was like a toying, like a cat and mouse game that was happening in the past of this connection. And they are saying that the Divine Feminine definitely participated in that. That there was this like back and forth of like, today I like you, today I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's like I'm giving you the impression that I care today and I'm jealous today. And then I pull back when I feel you approaching. So there is definitely this um, sense of emotional confusion that's coming in. And I don't feel like you did that purposefully. I feel like that was probably because you were feeling insecure and you were testing the waters and you were ill-equipped in the moment to um, express yourself. You just didn't have a lot of experience perhaps then. And it, was, it seemed really risky, so we just swallowed how we felt. And I just look at this pelican with those, those, that giant throat that the pelican has and how much weight it can carry, how much water it can carry in there. Um, because I feel like neither one of you gave each other the full spectrum of your feelings. And we've learned a really valuable lesson about that too. 
And I feel like that's part of the, the energy that's eating both of you up now. It's like that's the profound in, influence that they've had on you and the profound influence that you've had on them is this really strong lesson about where our loyalty should have lied, where what we should have said to each other. And I keep hearing that Dixie Chicks home song, Home is Where the Heart Is. Um, and so that song really is very nostalgic and very sad because it says, not a night goes by that I don't dream of wandering in the home that might have been. But it's like both of you were waiting for a lifeline from the other person. And now thirst is really driving them. I feel like they get jealous. But I also feel like they think it's mutual. Like this person doesn't think that you... They don't necessarily think it's one-sided. You may think it is, but this person doesn't. They think that they that luck is on their side when it comes to how you feel. They think that you perhaps feel jealous when it comes to them too. You have the hermit. And I, I just heard across this bridge when we get there. And I'm looking at this man on the bridge. And I feel like that was a mentality that was maintained from the past. It's like, oh, well, you know, when I face the obstacle, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Because there's an aspect of competition and being determined to, to succeed, but knowing that it's going to take practical plans because there's obstacles in the way. It doesn't, they, this person doesn't want it to be over because they have so much that they've suppressed inside that they haven't released yet. And they do feel tempted to provide clarity but again, they're, they're taking on a very slow approach if they do approach you. It's a very, very slow approach here. Um, there's a lot of major arcanic themes in your pile though. We started with the temperance. We have the sun, the fool, the hermit, the moon. Like this is a, a huge impact that you have also had on this person. So don't second guess you, the emotions that you felt. Spirit says that your heart space is very intuitive, but it's also very fragile and you sometimes second guess your own intuition. And that leads, leads you feeling or leaves you feeling really insecure. And Spirit says you can trust in that beautiful heart space of yours. We have the judgment and we have the tower. And this person wonders if it's permanent. They wonder if, if this is it. They hope that it's not. They're trying to find joy in their journey. They hope that it's not permanent. But they wonder if it is. And they have definitely had, there's the tower energy of like a, a light in the darkness about epiphanies, about how they put themselves in this situation, how they are frustrated with themselves too. Because look at the piranhas. The piranhas nipping at their heels. And this hanged man is headless. <laughs> you know, he's sitting here boying on the water, headless. It's like I didn't think with my head. I had fate nipping at my heels and I was just too scared to execute. I feel like in a perfect world, there would be a almost rising from the dead. It's like we would come back to life and have a do-over. But they wonder, again, the lesson has hit them hard, and they wonder if this is sort of a permanent change. It's like I definitely learned my lesson here. And the lesson really involves this spark. And about when we have a spark, we fuel it. If we have a little spark and we have a little match going and we want to have a bonfire out of that spark, we have to fuel it. We have to, we have to apply something to it. Elements of earth, elements of air to get it moving. We have to fuel it with something. What are they thinking about you? What sort of thoughts do they have? We have here receiving what we need, arriving, moving on, and closure issues. And that's what they need. They're, they're saying both of you need this. Look at the two wolves howling at the moon. And there's the boat. Howling at the moon. Both your intuitions are telling me, telling you both that you're feeling similarly, but you don't believe it. We have here the Grim Reaper. They worry that the relationship is over. No second chances. Grow and transform your life. That's their fear. And they're really kind of harshly judging themselves, and they feel like they have to surrender to that belief. But then there's the Two of Pentacles. It's like every time they start to think, yes, it's permanently over, and, and there's nothing I can do to create change, all of a sudden, their wheels start to turn. I was like, well, I'm not ready to close that door yet because what if there is the possibility of a fresh start? It's like, I'm worried to close the door completely because what if they reach out to me and then I'm not available for them? Or there's just this, this feeling of like, I can't, I can't close the chapter until I receive what I need. Until they receive clarity from you, I can't close the chapter. Because there's heartbreak, deeply hurt, sad, separated, grieving and mourning, feeling lost with that heartbreak. Feelings, please. 
we have here baby steps, action, following your intuition before it makes sense. And that's exactly what they learned. The hermit will also do that. The hermit will ground themselves and start to create a practical plan. And so they know that um, even though it doesn't feel logical to them, that they don't want to let go completely. But it's going to take very careful, calculated steps to be able to bridge this gap. We have called soul gifts. It's time to step up. And back of the deck says, we the Hathors deep love mother's milk and birth as a portal now there is definitely codependency here and there could be children involved with the mother's milk along with that ten of pentacles so take that as it resonates to your situation the called card is a lot like the judgment energy um, and so when we're asking the question does this person think about me too this is exactly the card we want to receive because this is a card that says not only have they been thinking about you but there's been a profound reflection that they've had to perform because of this connection so you have left a lasting impression on this person and it's been a prompt it's like a portal for them it it, it encourages them to look inward into their own situation and to travel or follow their thirst to the source so that they can figure out solutions on how to qu how to quench that thirst Ooh. i just saw i want commitment with you but just not yet what do they think about please i also feel like they just want some communication with you to offer peace in what you can the only peace that you can offer it's like they there's a peace inside of them that only you can fill up I do want us to be in a relationship. Even still, to this day. When we met, I just had this really strong feeling about you. It's like instantly this pressure inside the Eight of Wands. I do want to make things right with you, but just please give me the opportunity. They know that this is a slow approach and that now is not the time. But they don't want to give, they don't want to close that door completely. I do think about the future. And when I do, I think about you in it. And my nerves have been getting the best of me. And that's been a habit that has been in place for this person for a long time. Their nerves got the best of them in the past. Their nerves are getting the best of them in the future because it still feels risky. And it says here, I am really sensitive deep down, but I put up a really big front when it comes to you. We have all must have its prizes. 13, trying to please everyone. It's the death energy. You can see here the salt. It's like salt in our wounds and we have the dodo bird. And I think about, you know, things going the way of the dodo. I think about extinction um, and the 13 reverse. 13 reversed, I'm sorry, is the death reversed, which is inertia. I'm feeling really, really stuck because it has to come at some sort of sacrifice for someone watching. Like the death energy, it's like we have to close out old chapters in order to experience growth. So they're experiencing closure issues here. They don't feel like they can really embrace a full spectrum of, an, of emotional love in their present energy. Um, and it could be that they're involved in another connection perhaps, but it's also connecting your situation here. Um, this 13 energy, it's like, I can't please everyone. But what this person really is doing is trying to please everyone except themselves in the present moment. Because if they were trying to please themselves, then they would be they would be reacting to the fear factor that they have with love and with an open heart space. They worry about this. It's like the salt in our wounds if they feel like this is forever makes them very feel very sad they also get frustrated with the choices that they made feeling blocked and restrained they also could have current choices that they have to make here when it comes to you or perhaps other people and in this moment it stinks with the skunk spirit it says manage to be glad trying to find the joy in the journey trying to find balance within their investments right now um, and in the delays that they're experiencing but they're finding it burdensome they're finding it to be a struggle to manage to be glad to focus on abundance when they have such a when you have such a profound influence on them even in the 3d let's get a charm bowl please for pile number three what was the very last thought that pile three's person had about them in the bowl the strength reversed the five of wands so jealousy competition um, feeling determined to create some sort of change but not yet that's the thing it's like saying like I want to do this this and this but I can't do it right now um, the 
because of the lack of strength. And it has nothing to do perhaps with investments. It has everything to do with fear when the, when the strength is reversed. So they started thinking about you perhaps with other people or thinking about you in the dynamics of competition. And it really made them feel triggered, so to speak, in these thoughts. But they also recognize that they don't have the courage to come forward right now. And they hope that one day there's going to be some clarity between the two of you. I also feel this big sense with the temperance about wanting to mix with you, like wanting to physically mix together. We have the bow. I think of little children, little girls, but also being very highly thought of. So someone from your past. We do have the palm tree, a symbol of stability and the key. So somebody who could be could be in a dynamic with children um, in a commitment. We do have the slow handsaw as well, which is indicating they can't remove themselves from that commitment. And it's a slow sort of moving energy. Scorpio. We have the heart reverse, so somebody who's not showing their true heart space. We also have the nursing scrubs or the blocked heart chakra here. A healing energy, so a healer from the divine feminine. We have no matter where, star of Aquarius and Pisces with the fish. And I got, again, a sense of school with that fish. All right, pile three, that's what I have for you today. Hope it resonates with you. If it did, drop your comment below for a chance to win a free reading with me. Congratulations to this week's winner. I will be drawing another winner in a couple of days, so be sure to drop that comment and hit your notification bell. And be sure to keep your eye on your notifications if you have already dropped me comments this month. Um, you can also check out my links below for Etsy for personal reading. And on Instagram right now, I am offering a chance to win a free mini read, so be sure to check me out this week on Instagram too. But I hope that you have a beautiful day and I hope that you come back here and visit me on another, another day at the Tarot Cottage.